Today, I wanna to talk about the RTX 4000 series GPUs. I wanna talk about them from the top to the bottom in the order in which they were released to the public. I wanna talk about the pros and the cons of each one of these cards and break down why, frankly, so many people just hate these cards. Because right now in 2023, the PC community is frankly filled with a bunch of people that are just angry, pissed off, jaded, you name it. And I wanna talk about the history of how we got to this point because I think the history gives context and that's incredibly important. Today's video is gonna be long, it's gonna be filled with a lot of information and hopefully that means a lot of value for you. If you're not interested in a particular section like, like the history section, for example, then be sure to check out the timestamps below, AKA chapters, and you can then skip Get forward to the part that you are the most interested in. So sit back, relax. Thank you for checking out today's video. And before we get into it, please check out today's video sponsor. Thank you NordPass for sponsoring today's video. NordPass business is filled with a bunch of awesome tools to help you better manage your business. One of their tools is a password manager. Now this is so much more than just a normal password manager. It can automatically fill in your password on your favorite websites. It can automatically store all of those passwords and allow you to categorize them based on what type of website it is. And then you can even store your most commonly visited websites. Now, speaking of passwords, they have a password generator. Everyone uses the same flawed mechanisms for making a password, right? Your birthday, one, two, three, four. I mean, come on guys, right? So if you want a good, strong password, then NordPass Business has you covered because they can automatically create a strong password for you. And it gives you a lot of creative control about how many characters you want that password password to have and how strong it needs to be. All of this logic also applies to payment information. As a business owner, you may have more than just one credit card on hand. And so a secure way of keeping up with all of that is with NordPass Business. They will manage all of your credit card information for you and help you to check out faster and more securely on your most commonly visited websites. You can also categorize all the credit cards and store that information based on what that card should be used for specifically. If you're interested, check out all of these features for free for three months on me. Use my code EROCKONDECK and you will get a free three month trial to NordPass Business. So don't be shy, click the link in the pinned comment below or the description, your choice. All right, so let's talk about the 40 series cards. Okay, so first of all, how did we get here? On July 19, 2016, Nvidia released the GeForce GTX 1060 for $250. That went on to become the de facto go-to 1080p budget gaming card. Everyone loved that card because it was a great price to performance. It was cheap at $250 and it was awesome for 1080p gaming. And then about a year later in 2017, Nvidia released the 1080 Ti for $699. Now, Nvidia shot themselves in the foot with the 1080 Ti because basically they created a monster with that card. Even today in 2023, with this card being six years old at this point, gamers are still using the 1080 Ti. In fact, there are videos of people testing it with brand new AAA titles that came out this year in 2023 and the card can still run those titles at 1080p 60 FPS. That is incredible if you really stop and think about it. So the 1080 Ti is a monster. And then after the 10 series cards, Nvidia released the 20 series cards. Most people were not happy with those cards. And the reason why is because of price to performance. It simply was not offering the same value that the 10 series cards were offering. In fact, one of the main things about the 20 series cards was RTX or ray tracing. Nvidia was really trying to sell the idea of ray tracing. Almost no game supported ray tracing. And for the few games that did support ray tracing, gamers soon found out, hey, yeah, I can enable ray tracing and run it, but now I'm playing the game at 24 FPS or 30 FPS. And uh, well, hey, a fun fact about PC gamers, we don't like playing games at 30 frames per second. If that's what we wanted, we would go buy a console. And so ray tracing was really a little more than just a gimmick, if I'm being completely honest. But then Nvidia followed all of that up with the 30 series cards. You had a $500 3070, which was now outperforming the $1,200 2080 Ti. And you had that sweet price tag of 699 on the RTX 3080, which was literally an entire resolution tier ahead of the 2080. Anything the 2080 could do at 1080p, the 3080 could do at 1440p. It was finally a true generational leap and exactly what gamers wanted. But unfortunately, we were going into a worldwide pandemic, a chip or a silicon shortage, a crypto mining boom, 
boom. And then scalpers using bots to buy all the cards, resell them on eBay for hundreds of dollars over MSRP before a gamer could even consider buying one from a legitimate retailer like Best Buy, for example. And by time, all of that came to an end. The crypto mining boom went away, the silicon shortages went away, and cards were starting to show back up on store shelves. There were rumblings that the 40 series cards were right around the corner. And sure enough, by the time I got my hands on a 3080, about six months later, Nvidia announced the 40 series cards. It was honestly a rough time. But now I wanna transition into talking about the 40 series cards. So we are in the era of the 40 series GPUs. We still have 40 series cards yet to come out. The 4060 Ti comes out in July, the 16 gigabyte model that is, and the 4060 is coming out in a couple of days on June the 29th. And so now I wanna talk about all these cards. I wanna talk about the pros and the cons and really go through each one of the cards and break them down. So we're gonna start off with the RTX 4090. The RTX 4090 came out October the 12th, 2022 for the MSRP of 1599. Now what makes the 4090 so great, so this would be going into the pro category, is that the card is a beast, okay? It has no rival. AMD didn't even try to compete with the 4090. The card is absolutely amazing. It is the fastest gaming card we have ever seen. If you look at the specs of the card, you can see that it is the successor to the 3090, and because of that, it matches or exceeds the 3090 in virtually every measurable category or metric that actually matters. So if you look at the memory for example, it's still GDDR6X with 24 gigabytes. The memory bus width is exactly the same. The memory clock speed actually increased on the 4090. The memory bandwidth increased on the 4090. The core clock speed increased on the 4090. The boost clock speed increased. The number of transistors increased. The manufacturing process went from an eight nanometer down to a four nanometer process. And all of this directly translates to gaming performance. You see the 4090 absolutely dominating. 1440p, 4K, it doesn't matter, it dominates. And it's because it was a true successor to the 3090. But there are definitely some negative aspects to the 4090, right? Obviously the first one is the, is the price for crying out loud, is $1,600 starting out. That's not the maximum price. It starts at that and it goes up. Some of the AIB partner models are pushing $2,000. That is an insane amount of money. It is. It's a lot of money to get one card to go play video games. The other big con with the 4090 is all the controversy surrounding the melting connector. The 4090 has a connector and that connector has melted at least 50 times that we're aware of. But now there's reports coming in that has happened even more than that. Northridge Fix has opened up up, you know, basically a new case about this. And he's been talking about it on his channel. Gamers Nexus tried to close it out saying it was user error. And basically nobody really knows what the actual root of the problem is. But what we do know is that on 4090s, in some cases, the power connector is actually melting. So that is definitely a problem. And then obviously the final, you know, issue here is the fact that it's a massive card, man. It takes up a lot of space, okay? There's a really good chance it will not fit your case. You may have to actually upgrade your case to get this card to fit in there. And before we close out on the 4090, I want to take a look at this chart somebody put together. The source is actually coming from 3dcenter.com. However, over on Reddit, somebody made it look a little bit cleaner. And so that's the option I want to look at today. Basically, it's called RTX 40 compared to RTX 30 by performance, VRAM, TDP, MSRP, and performance per price ratio. And as you can see with the RTX 4090 right here, the predecessor was the RTX 3090. And overall, there is a 71% performance increase, and this is being measured at 4K. The VRAM is exactly the same. The TDP has actually gone up. It's the only 40 series card where we saw an increase in power draw and TDP, and the MSRP went up by 7%. And over Overall, this gives us a price to performance ratio of 60%. And so I think looking at things in a chart like this really kind of helps put things in perspective. I mean, the 4090 honestly is a phenomenal card and that's why it is honestly the only 40 series card to be received positively. So anyway, that's the pros and cons of the 4090, but now let's switch over and talk about the RTX 4080. The RTX 4080 released on November the 16th, 2022 for $1,199 or $1,200. Okay, now hold up right there. That's already a massive red flag, right? Honestly, the short version of all this is that the 4080 actually performs quite well. And overall, people do like the performance, but people cannot look past 
the the pricing of the 4080 because they're comparing it to the 3080 and all they know is that the 3080 was seven hundred dollars and now the 4080 is twelve hundred dollars that is a five hundred dollar price increase and of course i'm talking all us dollars here if you start looking at the technical specifications the power consumption is exactly the same the manufacturing process went from an eight nanometer down to a four nanometer the transistors increase the boost clock speed increase the core clock speed increase and the cuda cores increase and then you come down here and you start taking a look at the memory okay so the vram went up by six gigabytes the memory clock speed also increased but now we have some red flags the memory bus width was cut down to 256 bits the memory bandwidth was also cut down from 760 to 716 gigabytes now with the 4080 what i'll say is that no i don't necessarily think all the memory cutting hurt it too badly because it obviously outperforms all the 30 series cards by quite a large margin but it was an indicator of what was to come the 4090 was literally the only 40 series card to not get gimped in any kind of way and that is why gamers were really starting to get upset the 4080 is also a very high performing card a lot of people like to say the 4090 is the only true next gen card i disagree with that i have a 4080 i also had a 3080 prior to that the 4080 is a rock solid performer the card can perform incredibly well the problem is that the value sucks some of the memory specs were cut down it's incredibly expensive and it also still has the massive size of the 4090 the 4080 shares the exact same cooler as the 4090 in fact some aib models of the 4080 are actually larger than other models of the 4090 and when we take a look at this chart you see exactly what i'm talking about here so the 4080 compared to the 3080 is a 49 percent performance increase and again this is at 4k and the vram also went up by 60 percent so these are things we like to see the tdp is exactly the same which is also another positive but here is the problem a 72 percent msrp increase so that brings down the price to performance ratio to a negative 13 percent and that right there my friends is exactly why people hate the 4080 the 4080 was ragged on all across the board because of the price to performance that is really the only real con about the 4080 it's large like the 4090 and it's incredibly expensive therefore giving you a bad value but it is a solid performer and now that brings us to the 4080 12 gigabyte i mean 4070 Ti. The 4070 Ti released January the 5th, 2023 for 799. Now, a few things about this card, right? So obviously going into this card, there are already a couple of problems. Nvidia initially tried to sell us this card as a 4080 12 gigabyte model for $900. And everyone was able to look at the specs of the card and realize, wait a minute, this is cut down way too much from the other 4080. There's no way this is an actual 4080. Nvidia received so much negative feedback about this that they actually changed the naming of the card and they dropped the price by $100. Looking at the tech specs of the 3070 Ti, we can see the CUDA cores increase, the core clock speed increase, the boost clock speed increase, transistors increase, the manufacturing process went from 8 nanometers down to 4 nanometers, the power consumption went down by 5 watts, the VRAM increased by 4 gigabytes, and the memory clock speed increased. But once again, the memory bus width was cut down to 192 bits, and the memory bandwidth was cut down from 608 gigabytes down to 504 gigabytes. And unfortunately in this situation, the cut down of the memory specs on the 4070 Ti actually did make a little bit more of a noticeable impact on the 4070 Ti. And then on top of that, the 4070 Ti when compared to the 3070 Ti is a $200 price increase and so obviously no one's really filling that looking at our summary chart over here we can see the performance when compared to the 3070 ti is plus 44 percent and the vram is plus 50 percent so these things are good the tdp is more or less about the same the msrp went up by 33 percent and the price to performance ratio is only eight percent now that eight percent is definitely a lot better than what we saw with the negative 13 percent from the 48 but at the end of the day, gamers are not really going to get excited for that. If you have a 3070 Ti, that's not likely to make you go out and spend your money and upgrade to a 4070 Ti. And so 
it was honestly received with a lot of mixed reviews and i think a lot of it had to do with the initial announcement of it being a 40 80 12 gigabyte for 900 people knew what nvidia was trying to do with that card and so it already had a negative stigma going into the reviews and honestly i do think that impacted it from a public perception standpoint but also on top of that it's 2023 more and more games are coming out using unreal engine not being optimized having shader issues using way too much vram and the 12 gigabytes of vram on this card was quickly exceeded in games like hogwarts legacy we saw that in my testing here on the channel as well as other youtubers who were testing it in various games with various settings and so it just made the card look incredibly weak early on out the gate and now as for the 4070 that came out april the 13th 2023 for 599 and when you compare this card to the 3070 you can see the cuda cores are exactly the same you can see we do have an increase in the base clock and the boost clock the memory did go up by four gigabytes and the memory clock went up and the memory bus was again cut down from 256 to 192 bit and the tdp here was also cut down now look full disclosure i made a video called why nobody's buying a 4070 and at the time that i made that video that was a true statement everyone was reporting that the 4070 was not selling it was getting lackluster reviews now many months later people are going back to that video and they're leaving comments like well i like the 4070 i bought a 4070 yes today many months after the video please look at the publication dates people that is so important here on youtube because what you have to keep in mind is that at the time when the 4070 came out people still had hope for the 4060 ti the 4060 and even amd's cards like the rx 7600 but unfortunately the 4060 ti and the 7600 were not well received and so now today people are looking at cards like the 7600 from amd and the 4060 ti and they're saying you know what screw this i'm just gonna go get a 4070 and that is why i think we're finally starting to see people rush out and pick up a 4070 because when you look at a 1200 dollars 4080 a 1600 dollars 4090 and just an awful awful performer with a 4060 ti you kind of feel trapped like okay the only card i can really get here is the 4070 or the 4070 ti and now looking at our summary chart here we can see that the 4070 compared to the 3070 was a 27 percent performance increase a 50 percent vram increase negative nine percent on the tdp and the msrp went up by 20 percent therefore giving it only a price to performance ratio of six percent so if you thought the 4070 ti was boring with only eight percent of a price to performance increase look at the 4070 it's sitting at six percent and so that is why so many people were just not really filling the card when it was first announced but now let's talk about the atrocious 4060 ti unfortunately the 4060 ti has two different variants it has an eight gigabyte model which came out may the 24th 2023 for 399 and it has a 16 gigabyte model which is scheduled to come out later this year in july 2023 for 499 and when we take a look at the tech specs here we can see the 4060 ti was actually cut down on cuda cores there is an increase in the boost clock the card is more efficient sitting at 160 watts and they cut the memory interface down from 256 bit down to 128 bit and then going back over to our summary chart over here we can see the 4060 ti is listed twice one for the 16 gigabyte model and one for the 8 gigabyte model they're both being compared to the 3060 ti and they both have a performance increase of 13 percent the 4060 ti 16 gigabyte does have a 100 percent vram increase whereas the 8 gigabyte has a zero percent increase because it's exactly the same the tdp has improved the msrp went up by 25 percent on the 4060 ti 16 gigabyte model therefore giving it a negative 10 percent price to performance ratio and the 8 gigabyte model the msrp is listed as exactly the same therefore giving it a price to performance ratio of 13 percent now right here is an area where i really need to clarify a couple of things because the 4060 ti just came out a couple of weeks ago and if you watched any reviews then you know it was not well received and virtually everybody hated that card and right here when you're looking at a plus 13 percent price to performance increase you might be thinking well hey guys that's that's not really you know too bad the two cards before it were six and eight percent so 13 percent is better right yes but it also comes down to the games that you're testing if you go and watch gamers nexus video where he reviews the 4060 ti it's a bloodbath i mean in a lot of cases when he compared it to the 3060 ti he was only getting a two percent performance increase a four percent performance increase a five percent performance increase in some cases it, it was not 13 percent 
the majority of the time. So it really does come down to the games you're testing, the settings you're using, ray tracing on, ray tracing off, the LSS on, all that different stuff. But at the end of the day, the 4060 Ti was not well received initially. And on top of all of that, in my opinion, I don't really support the two different variants, eight gigabytes and 16 gigabytes, because all that does is cause market confusion. People don't know, okay, hey, is this is this the eight gigabyte model? Is this a 16 gigabyte model? And then when you're talking about it, you have to specify which one you're talking about because the VRAM does in fact make a difference whenever you're talking about benchmarking. It just adds more work and more complexity. And just overall, I'm not a fan of it. Later this week, the RTX 4060 will be releasing June the 29th, 2023 for two 99 and I do plan on going to Micro Center buying a card for myself for review. I'm going to do a full review on the card here on the channel and then I'm going to use it for different upcoming game benchmarks like Ratchet and Clank and Starfield and stuff like that. And then later this year in the fall, I'm putting it into a PC build I'm doing and I will be giving it away. And now I just did an initial impressions video of the 4060. It's here on the channel. You can check it out if you want to see it. I got a bunch of shorts around it. And overall, my initial thoughts are this. The card is launched with eight gigabytes of VRAM. I'm not a fan of that, I'm just not. Eight gigabytes of VRAM, in my opinion, in 2023 is about as bad as 30 FPS. It is just unacceptable and we don't need it. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that. However, with that being said, it's also a card that costs $299. I mean, you gotta put things in perspective here. And I understand there was a point in time where you were getting you know, some of the best value cards out there for $250, like the GTX 1060, for example. This card, even at eight gigabytes, has more VRAM than the GTX 1060, and it significantly outperforms a card like the GTX 1060 for only $50 more. And I also understand and the counter argument, yeah, but why would you compare it to the 1060? That card is old true, but that card is popular and Nvidia even listed it on their website as the 4060 is meant to replace gamers who still have a 1060 and a 2060, which by the way, is a lot of gamers. If you have a 3060, while technically the 4060 is a little bit better, it's not really meant for you to go upgrade to it. Now, speaking of the 3060, when you compare the 4060 to the 3060, once again, we have a cut in CUDA cores. We don't yet have the clock speed information on the core clock. The boost clock is listed to go a little bit higher than the 3060, so that's good. The transistors also increase. Again, we have that nanometer process improvement, except instead of going down to a four nanometer, it went down to a five nanometer. The power consumption or TDP also went down from 170 watts to 115 watts. They're listing the RAM going down from 12 gigabytes to eight gigabytes, which again is not entirely an apples to apples comparison. We'll talk more about that here in a minute. And again, we have another instance where the memory bus width was cut down from 192 bit down to 128 bit. and the the memory bandwidth was also cut from 360 gigabytes down to 272 gigabytes. And when we look at our summary chart, they're taking the 4060, they're comparing it to the 3060 12 gigabyte model, and the overall performance increase here is listed at 18%. It is important to know that Nvidia is claiming a 20% performance increase without the use of frame generation. The VRAM increase is listed as negative 33%. The TDP obviously went down, the MSRP went down by 9%, and so the overall price to performance ratio here is listed at 30%. Now there are some things about this that I don't like. Number one, the 4060 is not out yet. So it's really hard to finalize some of these numbers. Number two, the 3060 also had an eight gigabyte model, but yet they're only comparing it to the 12 gigabyte model. And when I put my 4060 video out talking about the first impressions, all the comments were only talking about the 3060 12 gigabyte, but people forget the 3060 also has an eight gigabyte model variant. And so if you compare it to the eight gigabyte model instead of the 12 gigabyte model, then things start to look a little bit differently on some of the numbers here, especially on the VRAM. Instead of it being a negative percentage, it would be a 0% because it's exactly the same. So it really depends on how you wanna compare it. And the 3060 12 gigabyte versus eight gigabyte is exactly why I don't like the dual memory variants because it causes confusion. Okay, we finally made it to the end of all the 40 series cards and now allow me another couple of minutes to really kind of summarize a lot of this. I wanted to make this video simply because I see a whole lot of anger and jadedness within the PC community. And quite frankly, it's very discouraging to see this type of stuff because when people go out and they work hard, save their money, 
and they, they put together a high-end PC, they don't want to be insulted for it because somebody else is jealous or they hate Nvidia or whatever the situation is. My really good friend who has a 4090 worked two jobs to buy that 4090. He used his second job to save up for the 4090. And now when he shares that 4090 in a Discord server or on Reddit or wherever, he gets called entitled a rich snob and people reply with, it must be nice. And as for me, I bought the 4080 and people tell me I'm what's wrong with the PC community because I supported the price hike on the 80 series cards and now Nvidia knows they can get away with it. It's my fault. Uh, newsflash people, the 2080 Ti was $1,200. The 3080 Ti didn't even exist until Nvidia realized that 3080s were being sold for $1,200 on the secondhand market. And so then they released the 3080 Ti for a clear cash grab at $1,200. And so the 4080 is now here at $1,200. The writing was on the wall. We had all the breadcrumbs to follow. And unfortunately, Nvidia screwed us all over. They really did. And then my buddy wanted to build a PC around the time Hogwarts Legacy came out. And so I helped him build a PC. He went ahead and went with a 4070 Ti. And I benchmarked that PC with Hogwarts Legacy with the 4070 Ti. And so many of the comments were like, why did you get a 4070 Ti? It's such an awful card. And it was just negative comment after negative comment after negative comment. And then of course the 4070 came out. And if you bought one, you know, the first week or so, people kind of laughed at you because it was a meme at that point in time. Anyway, look, I digress. My point is, it doesn't really matter what you buy. You can buy the lowest end 40 series card, people are going to have something negative to say, and, or you can buy the highest end 40 series card and people will still have something negative to say. It doesn't matter. People are just pissed off at GPUs. They're pissed off at Nvidia, rightfully so. That, that is why I explained the history at the beginning of the video. I see it on a daily basis. My YouTube comments, Twitter, Discord server, it, it does not matter. I see it everywhere. And I just wanna say, hey, look, the next time you see somebody with a 40 series card, try to take a step back and just be happy for them. If they're happy with their build, that is really the only thing that actually matters, right? And I will say this, I do believe the 50 series cards will be better. I do, I honestly believe that. And the reason why I believe that is for two reasons. The first reason is because the 40 series cards are not selling well at all. And with a 4070 Ti, we proved that as gamers, as consumers, we can band together and we can make a difference. And the 40 series cards are not selling well. I also believe the 50 series cards will be better, at least in terms of overall value and price to performance because I see a clear pattern in here. The 10 series cards were great price to performance. The 20 series cards were bad price to performance. The 30 series cards were great price to performance. The 40 series cards are bad price to performance. And now we are due for a new rollout of new cards that are a good price to performance that are a good value. And so for those two reasons, I do believe the 50 series cards will be better than the 40 series cards. And so if you decided to boycott Nvidia, not buy a GPU and all that stuff, I do wanna say, I think there is light at the end of the tunnel. The 50 series cards will likely be here fall of 2024. So there's a lot of time between now and then, there's a lot of things that can happen between now and then. So let's just wait and see how things roll out. But hey, look, if you watched, till this far in the video wow i'm impressed forget about leaving me a like i give you a like that is insane so thank you so much for your support that's incredibly awesome um, do me a favor, drop a comment below. Let's try to have a civil conversation about this. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I do content like this all the time. And before we go, I gotta say thank you to all my Patreon members. If you want behind the scenes exclusive access to content that'll never be here on YouTube, check out the link in the pinned comment below. But hey, that's all I got for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Like, subscribe, comment, do all the things. And until next time, E-Rock out.